Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the 522 limited edition bundle that Nextbase are doing for the 522 camera and the matching rear camera that goes with it. This is a bit of a fitters review. I mean, I fit electronic products day in, day out for the trade and basically I've done hundreds of these now. So I'm looking at reliability, what comes in the box, things like that. For actual fitting instructions on these, I've got fitting for, well, I'd say 99% of UK, European sold cars on the market. Just search my channel for your specific car i've also got a generic rear camera fitting guide as well up on there so should help you with that but guys first things first this kit what do we get in the kit is it worth the money well let's open it up and have a look at the actual items as you've seen on the front cover this one includes a memory card if you buy the camera separately they don't come with the memory card so that's worth bearing in mind this one comes with the adapter there so you can plug it in a pc etc if you want to view your own files they also have an app available on the app store or if you're on android you can get it from the play store the next base app so you can view your footage remotely on your phone the normally default recording little three minute clips one after the other and if it senses a bump, it'll put a red padlock on the screen and lock that three minute clip so that it doesn't overwrite or delete it. The only way to get rid of that, of course, is to format the memory card, which you can do from the controls on the camera screen, which I'll show you shortly. So we've got a memory card. We've got a soft carry case there, which is ideal because the, the camera is on a magnetic mount. OK, so this panel on the front here, which I'll show you, comes off and it's on a magnetic mount so you can pull it off pop it in the case, put it out of the way if you park somewhere, shall we say, a little bit dubious. Then we have the rear camera. This is basically the size of a golf ball. I'll unpack this and show you. Comes with, again, a magnetic mount. So it's got a sticky pad there to stick on your rear window. Try not to stick it over your heated element. Stick it on just glass and it is magnetic. As you can see, it sort of rotates. So you can sort of line it up. One small word of warning, and this goes for pretty much all the dash cams on the market at the moment. A lot of cars, the rear one especially, will interfere with DAB radio. Okay, not FM, not AM, DAB only. Sometimes, well, a lot of the times actually, you will plug your rear camera in and completely lose your DAB signal. Okay, your retailer that you buy this thing from should know that. Okay, they should be aware of that. After having spoken to Nextbase Technical and Blackview Technical and various other companies that make these cameras, they're saying the shielding on the cable and the cameras is up to UK spec. OK, so in other words, they're not prepared to make the shielding any better on these cameras. It's just one of them things. You end up having a rear camera or you end up having DAB, one or the other. It doesn't affect every single car on the market but it is widespread and is a big problem. I'm pretty sure if you do a quick Google search, you'll see plenty of people complaining, saying the DAB has packed up. One to bear in mind, guys, like I say, contact your retailer if you're unsure. Ask them the straight question. If they can't give you a straight answer, yeah, they're avoiding it. So, there's your extension cable that goes front to rear. Now, this is long enough to do most vans. It should say on the side here how long it is. 6.5 metres, so you're good there for a to push carpet fitters length van. I mean a push, because obviously you've got to think about routing it round corners and stuff. The average car, easily long enough. This end goes in your front camera, in the side, and the jack end there plugs in your rear camera, like so. Normally we run the cable first, then stick the camera on the window after, but that's, like I say, follow the fitting guide for that type of thing. Let's have a look at the front camera now. When we open the box up, you're greeted with a couple of little notifications here. Basically, it's like a quick guide and warranty and everything. Pop that out of the way. You've got your main camera itself in a little jiffy bag. And underneath here, you have two mounts. You have a sticky pad mount, yeah, with a magnetic front on it. I'll unpack that in a moment and show you, because that's normally the one I use, to be honest, guys. It's got a power connector that goes in the side. Let's have a look at it. So there's your power connector that goes in there with your power cable. And it's magnetic, like I was saying, so it clicks onto the camera as such and mounts to your window screen. You also get a suction mount version of it, like so. These are pretty good for a suction mount, don't get me wrong, they can still fall off, but they're not too bad, you know, compared to some where they're always falling off your window screen. And you get a power cable that plugs into your cigarette lighter, should you wish, along with a little tool 
for bending your trim out of the way if you want to hide your wiring, you know, out of the way in the roof line and etc. One last thing, there's a little USB cable here for plugging it into your computer so you can, like I say, transfer your files or update the camera. And that part is critical. These things are really reliable, but they need frequent updates because obviously phones get frequent updates. So the software on these goes out of compatibility with your phone and then all of a sudden your phone app to view your files isn't working. Or the camera will start acting strange. That's because they need software updates. So you have to plug them in your computer, download the latest firmware, and it'll automatically update on the camera. When you go, when you plug your computer into them, it comes up with a little menu and it says power on or factory update, etc. Tells you how to do it on the website, Nextbase website. So guys, you know, if you ever have to do that, go on the Nextbase website and have a look. Let's open the camera up. There's the camera out of the packaging. That's the magnetic cover I was on about. So basically you just take that off. That's magnetically stuck in there. That's where the mount goes, yeah. So this mount sticks into there so you can take it on and off. Lens cap, take that off because that's for your, your dust, etc. You don't want that while it's in packaging. Memory card slot, power slot, power button rather. Another charging port here, should you wish. And there's your rear camera slot, so you pull that off and stick your rear camera in. Little notice on here that nobody ever reads, basically telling you to charge it for two hours before you use it. Well, if you've got it in your car and it's been hardwired, just do lots of little trips before you put parking mode on, because parking mode will absolutely cane the battery. Parking mode does not last for very long. It's very short term. It's not meant for you to be able to stick it in an airport car park and come back a week later and expect it to have captured everything. It's only short stay. So it's not a surveillance camera. Please do not buy one of these thinking it is a surveillance camera. It's not. Reliability is excellent apart from the internal battery getting crackered because no one's read the instructions and also the problem with DAB. Other than that, they are very, very good. So I'm going to get this powered up and we'll have a look at it actually working, go through the menus, etc. Just a quick one before we power it up. I highly recommend if you're hardwiring the camera to get the official hardwiring kit for it. Um, basically these wired to the fuse box of the car is completely plug and play. So if it's a leased car or whatever, you can take it out without any damage to the vehicle. They come with three different fuse spurs for doubling up your fuse sockets, three different sizes. The ferrite core, which is meant to reduce your interference to the radio. In reality, they don't actually do a fat lot on this particular installation and obviously a replacement power cable. You'll see more detail on these kits in any of my fitting guides for vehicle specifics because I use them nearly every single time. So guys, check out your own vehicle, search for it on the channel. Right, moving on. Okay, so we've powered up the camera, as you can see. I've got it sort of sort of dummy test bedded up here at the moment it's really hard to capture the screen guys because it's a really sunny day here in england which is really rare to be fair and uh, as you can see the reflections are mental but if i just quickly go through can i get a better image for you is that better we can see a bit better there really awkward but um it supports other languages as you can see we'll just go for the one i can actually read there we go miles per hour kilometers per hour satellite connection i recommend you do your phone connection by the way after a couple of hours of driving so it remembers it and doesn't forget all the settings that you're going to put in so this bit here when it says app features for, to enable alexa emergency sos and stuff like that I recommend you do it when the camera's had a charge if you do it straight away sometimes when you switch the ignition off it will just forget it all so skip that one for now setup complete and then you've got your insert your SD card, but the bit that's important that I'm going to show you is a charge indicator down at the bottom right hand corner, just here look, microphone just here, you can turn the microphone on and off, depending if you want to record your, you know, voice in the vehicle, most people don't, little satellite symbol flashing away there, it's automatically set the date and time when it's got its connection, up here we have a cog, touchscreen working really well there as you can see, you got your connection app, which like I say, I'm not going to do because you're going to have to connect that to your own phone, guys. We have video settings. The only ones that you're going to worry about on here, because they are sort of pre-set up, is audio. I'd leave exposure alone if you're in the UK. It's sort of set for our lighting climate. You can turn audio on and off. There you go. And the other one that you'll probably want to use, I'll just show you video length. 
quickly. One, two, three minutes there. Look, guys, pretty, pretty simple. Normally set them on three. There we go. Resolution, leave that alone as well, to be honest with you. 1440p is ample to be able to zoom a number plate in at night and be able to read it. In fact, anything above 1080p is. So, uh, although you've got other options, look, I'll probably just leave it on default. Let's just go back, or not, as the case may be. Touch screens are normally more responsive than this. It must be me. If we go to settings, you've got screen saver on and off. You can have it on or you can have it displaying your speed. This is important. If you have a crash in a 30 and you're doing 32 miles per hour and your camera's recorded it, it has to do care and attention. Normally, you'll be the one that gets busted for that. Bear that in mind. Yes, I have had people come back and say that has happened to them. So don't think it won't happen. It can. Just warning you. Parking mode, like I say, if you put that on, make sure the battery's charged first. Otherwise, you can crack a jacket completely. I've seen it happen. And you've also got... We just swipe country language time zone date device sounds on and off auto power off screen dimming we've set all this up at the start speed units etc and this one format sd card every three months i'd roughly say if you're a normal driver i mean normal i mean like not a taxi driver or a courier that type of thing who's in the car all the time then you know you can hit format and clear the card it normally does help system information and sometimes this here firmware this is on 19.1 this is the bit that will change if you have to update your camera other things of interest on the camera press and hold this button here to save the last three minutes of footage it'll put a padlock on the screen and it will save it it won't write over it and like i say on the side there you've already seen everything that the camera's got there's its mount look with its power cable plugged in like I say, overall, these are very, very good cameras. I'm not even going to bother quoting your price because the prices are all over the place depending if people have got them on sale or not. Quick Google will soon answer you that question. They are good value for money, guys, and they work really, really well. If you get the DAB problem, yeah, it's a pretty tricky one to solve right now because none of the other manufacturers do anything about it either. Good bit of kit, worth the money. Good package because you get all the extras with it. Like I say, any problems fitting it into your vehicle, just have a look at my channel and go for the car specific video. Hopefully that was of some help somewhere to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you again next time. Bye for now.